Hi, it's Mari Soul, your rebel guide to living a life of freedom abroad, bringing you an episode of Roaming the Now, where entrepreneurs, coaches, and mentors come together to give you a behind-the-scenes look at the real and raw experience of setting out to a new country and building a life and business abroad. Make sure to like and subscribe to Roaming the Now. Enjoy! Hello, and welcome to this episode of Roaming the Now. Today, I have Jessica Grace Coleman of the Travel Transformation Podcast here to talk with us around Is Traveling Alone Empowering? She's currently in England right now visiting her hometown, but normally, based on what I know about you, you're on the you're on the flight or like on the road. I don't know what the right word would be. <laughs> yeah, I say on the road, yeah. <laughs> normally on the yeah. road moving around traveling. Um, So before we dive into our topic today of just really diving into traveling alone, is this empowering? Is it not? I mean, hint, hint, it is very empowering. Um, I would love for you to (laughs) tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. So I'm Jessica Grace Coleman, or Jess. And as you said, um, I run the Travel Transformation Podcast. I'm also known as the Travel Transformation Coach. So I'm a certified travel coach. I'm an author. My most recent book was called Intentional travel transformation and that was the story of my travel transformation last year involving solo travel so this is a great topic for me um I'm also the founder of the flip the script travel transformation academy and basically I'm here to inspire and motivate people to use travel as a tool to completely change themselves and their life because that's what I did and now I want to help other people do the same and basically show them it's never too late it doesn't matter if you're quiet or an introvert like I am and that you don't have to do anything as monumental as um like walking the PCT or climbing Mount Everest to achieve amazing transformative results so yeah that's me in a nutshell yes I think that that's really big and not something that I've actually found myself like sharing on a lot of episodes because I obviously like I talk to people who move all the way to like a different country right and and typically these people tend to be leaning more towards personal growth you know transformation inner transformation but I also highlight like you don't have to move to another country to access this you know like it, it doesn't have to be a move it could be a month it could be two weeks it's just like finding your what is your way to transform I think that's honestly what it is you know because we're all yeah definitely we're all, yeah, we're all super different, but um, I want to hear about your solo travels because that's like definitely on topic, definitely on theme. So uh, the floor is yours. I'm really excited to listen to this. Okay, yeah. So I've done quite a bit of solo traveling over the years, um, here and there, like trips here and there. And I've always wanted to do the whole digital nomad thing. Never got around to it. Then the pandemic hit. Obviously, no one could travel. And, you know, a lot of people reprioritized what they wanted out of life, all that kind of stuff. I'm sure a lot of people can relate listening to this. And I wanted to prioritize travel. Um, but you know, none of my friends or family wanted to become digital nomads. It's not like you can just go with your friends. So, you know, you have to do it by yourself. And that's always a bit, um, overwhelming. I get it, but I knew that I needed to push myself out of my comfort zone. If I was ever wanting to get to the next level with my business, with my social life, basically, because as I said, I'm a very shy, quiet introvert and meeting new people and, you know, doing all that stuff, going to big parties and things, it it drains me and it doesn't come naturally to me. And just things like putting myself out there online for my business, you know, going on things like podcasts, stuff like that used to terrify me. So I knew I had to get over that if I ever wanted to get to the next level. And it would have been holding me back my entire life. I used to hate presentations at school, university, into my job. I hated doing presentations. I would never go after a promotion if it meant another interview, you know, that kind of stuff. So I was like, I need to, you know, get this done. And what better way than solo travel? Because I know how much that boosts your confidence anyway. It, It shows you how capable you are and it shows you that you can do the hard things. And if you can travel around the world on your own, in countries where you don't speak the language and you don't know anyone and you can survive that and not only survive it, but have a great time and use it to your advantage, then you can literally do anything. So I'm such a huge advocate for solo travel for anyone. And like I say, I'm shy, quiet, introvert with social anxiety. So if I can do it, literally anyone can. But um, yeah, basically last year um, in March uh, or April, I think it was, I booked a flight to Bilbao in Spain and I'm from England. So, you know, it's not that far. 
And like you say, you don't have to go halfway around the world to experience transformative results. You could even go halfway down the road, like half an hour away from your house if it's somewhere you've never been. And I talk about travel principles. So like getting outside your comfort zone, meeting new people, trying new things, going somewhere new. You can do all that an hour from your house. You don't have to get on a plane. Um, so if you want to start small, I definitely recommend doing that. But yeah, I went to uh, the Basque Country in Spain and I spent a month in a co-living house, which is basically a big house, like a big Airbnb. It was a beautiful, huge villa that I would never have been able to afford to stay in on my own or, you know, even with a few friends. This is about 15 of us sharing the cost. And it was with digital nomads all over the world. You live together, you work together, you socialize together. There are social events, there are professional events. So you get to share your skills and all that kind of stuff. And as I said, one of my big fears was putting myself out there in fear of public speaking. So at the start of the month, I did a Skillshare workshop on life goals and legacy, life purpose and legacy, sorry. And I was terrified, <laughs> but I made myself do it because I knew I needed to get to the next level. And then the whole month, I just threw myself into every social event, every professional event, you know, put myself in the middle of experiences rather than just sitting on the outskirts watching, which is what I usually do. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I wanted to push myself. And yeah, by the end of the month, I had changed so much. I even write, wrote a poem about our time there, which is, you know, so cringy, but <laughs> I never would have done this before. But I wanted to remember my time there and I thought it would be quite funny and to get all our in jokes and stuff like that there. And then on the last night, I read it out to the group and the difference between that moment and the moment at the start when I was like literally shaking, thinking of talking in front of even just 15 people. And then at the end, I was just like having fun. It didn't matter. All that kind of stuff. Like just something as simple as that completely changed my life because now I go on podcasts. I have my own podcast. I record videos. I go live on social media all that kind of stuff. I'm not averse to like public speaking if in the future I go on stages, things like that. And that came from solo travel and staying in a co-living, meeting new people. And I like to tell people solo travel means doesn't mean you have to stay solo for long. You can go group tours, co-livings, hostels, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it just, and it completely changed the trajectory of my life as well, because I wrote a book about it. As I said, I did the podcast, started a new business around it, and that would not have happened if I'd not done this. Um, and after that, I did another month of solo traveling around Spain and France. I went to Paris on my own. And I think if you can go to a city like Paris on your own and, you know, you're okay and you can navigate around, you don't know the language, but you still have a great time, then you know, you can literally do anything. The world is your oyster. And that's what I love about solo travel. And I'm always, always, always trying to convince people to try it, even if it is, like I say, just half an hour down the road or just a day trip or a weekend away on your own or, you know, just getting used to doing stuff on your own. So, yeah, I feel very passionately about this subject. Yeah, it's it's interesting to to hear like, oh, like you're an introvert, like, you know, because <laughs> I'm like, I, I would not. <laughs> The way we entered this call, I would not have made that assumption. <laughs> <about you. laughs> um, but I, I would agree with you in terms of, you know, it's interesting. I always had this idea I would solo travel, like when I was a little kid. And then I didn't really solo travel. I ended up just like traveling places by myself and then meeting someone there. But I was still like navigating, like, you know, mm -hmm. how do I get to this place or how do I get here or this? But I would say like really the one thing that I, I did do solo is I did move to like to Mexico where I live now solo. Um, when I landed here, I did live with like, you know, an aunt and uncle of mine, but I didn't really know them, you know, <laughs> like and they didn't they didn't they, didn't, they don't speak English still. Um, <laughs> and so when I when I share with people that they're like, wait, what? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I was just like, here we go. Like but I, I recognize that like my mold was like my my move was pretty bold of like yep let's go <laughs> I'm not <laughs> solo traveling I'm solo moving <laughs> mm. but like you um, say that's a lot of the same things like the navigating I think is one of the main things that freaks people out they, they worry that they're not going to be able to do it but in this day and age there's so many apps you can use you know for translation for maps for using the metro for using the underground for using the trains like google maps will literally tell you which train to get in which direction which stop to get off you just you don't even need to think about that stuff anymore so i think that puts a lot of people off but it's really not as much as a problem as it used to be even like five years ago so that's something to keep in mind yeah i actually would love to just echo that because when i didn't have my citizenship here in mexico and i was like going back and forth like i would just use dd like everyone was like well how do you get back to the airport and how do you do this and how do you use that and if you didn't know this Mexico City airport is kind of like 
hot mess to navigate and the people that are like not helpful. (laughs) (laughs) And so like, I just like kind of had, I'll be honest, I had anxiety every time I had to go to the airport to like hop on a flight to get back because one time I forgot my like visa and they like didn't let me get on the plane. And like, cause I didn't have the paper and I didn't realize that I needed that paper. Now it's digital. It's like now they have, you know, improved their system. So just to let you know, <laughs> years ago, I was at the airport, literally waiting in line. And I was like, oh, I don't have it. And I realized I left it on the dresser. Um, and they were like, okay, well then like, you can't leave unless you go to the office to another one. And then the like airport was like, oh, well you need to have a paper boarding pass. And then I kind of was just like, you know what? Like I'm not making my flight. It leaves in 40 minutes. And so then I basically just like went to the, um, you know, like, you know, I, I went to the desk and obviously they, you know, they speak Spanish differently, like in every region you are in Mexico, but like I explained to them, like, I don't know what happened. And then I was like having to use more advanced words. So I had like, you know, Google translate helping me <laughs> and they were like, <laughs> Oh, like, well, no one told you like, okay, like we're really sorry about that. And I was able to get my flight changed for a couple of days later, like for free, like I didn't have to pay or like do anything. Mm-hmm. But I think like, that's a moment of like solo traveling where I'm like in the airport alone realizing like, yeah, I'm not getting on my flight. <laughs> like it's not yeah. happening. And everyone is making it super difficult to actually be able to get on my flight. And I'm just kind of like, well, you know, I guess I'm just meant to be a couple days more. <laughs> That's yeah. the thing. Like things can happen like that. They have happened to me. Like flights have been canceled completely. And, you know, you just figure it out. It, either people will help you or you. there's always options. And if you, like a lot of people have to problem solve in their daily lives, in their jobs, they have to problem solve. And it's it's just problem solving on the road. And it just seems a bit more overwhelming because you're on your own. But like you say, Google Translate is a godsend. Like sometimes it's a bit iffy, but most of the time you can get your point across. You can have whole conversations just by like typing it into your phone and then holding it up and then they type it into there and hold it up. I've done that. And, you know, so you're never going to be completely without help. And there are always people to ask for help, even if hopefully they'll be more helpful than <laughs> some of the people you met. But, you know, like it's never it's never going to be that bad. Like if something goes wrong, you'll be able to figure it out like you do in your normal daily lives. So I don't think that should stop people from going either. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I always like to point this out to everyone, like Mexico city airport, like luckily I do speak Spanish. However, some words, for example, are like really advanced. I'm like, well, I've never used that word before. So Google translate. But I always say to people, like if you're traveling out of Mexico city airport and like English is your native language and you don't really speak Spanish then like you better get there like two and a half hours before. Because, like, the way that gates are and everything, it's kind of like you're playing a game <laughs> in terms of, like, finding your terminal. And people will literally give you, like, the wrong directions because, I don't know, they want to. Like, I don't know what it is about Mexico City Airport. Like, Benito Juarez, like, if anyone from there is listening, like, I don't know. But I've talked to a lot of other, like, American expat friends, and they're like, yeah, no, like, Benito Juarez, like, you need to make sure you're at least a minimum two hours there ahead of time, because it's just kind of, like, it's like a game to, like, actually get to your gate and board your your flight. <laughs> Yeah, I actually, I actually quite like that. I like the, I like the idea of you can think of travel as a game, and then it doesn't seem so scary. It's just like it's a fun challenge that you have to like figure out. I don't know, I quite like that. But also, I also get to airports super early anyway. I think it's just like the whole anxiety of like even if you're super early, there's always that thought of I might miss my flight. So I always get there really early anyway. And I think that's a good, good uh, advice for anyone who's maybe anxious, just like. Have you seen that meme online? It's like something like, I always make sure I get to the airport four hours early so I can sit across the the, the aisle from the gate and be anxious about losing, about missing my flight from there. And it's, it's that kind of thing. And, you know, like the constant checking of your passport and stuff like that. I still get that, even though I've traveled a lot. But yeah, get there in plenty of time. That helps. And I really like the idea of thinking about it as a game anyway. Like, I think that would make it more fun if you're if you are anxious about traveling. Just, you know, it's, it doesn't it's not that serious. It's ha- you're meant to be having fun when you're traveling. So, you know think of it like a game why not (laughs) yeah no that's honestly kind of how I began to think about it after like going in and out of of Benito Juarez and TDMX like I basically was like okay this is a game I actually tend to be an anxious flyer in terms of like okay am I in time am I gonna get to the gate on time like where's the things like where's that like I'm the person who like will 
basically look at the time, find where my gate is. Okay, great. There's my gate. I'll walk there and then go to the bathroom and then get my coffee and then like get all the things to wait because I just like, (laughs) I guess, yeah. And when it comes to just knowing that, okay, I know where I'm going and I'll be there at the correct time. Like, okay. But like to kind of just like leave that up in the air is like too anxiety inducing for me. I mean, honestly, I'm trying. I can't do that. Oh, yeah. No, I'm exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think like, you know, when we're thinking about this idea of traveling alone and empowering, I think like based on what we've talked around so far, I think it really gives you the opportunity to just see like, how good of a problem solver are you, right? Or how can you handle the pressure? Or how can you navigate the challenges? And I think for me, I found it empowering because I found like basically like, I don't know, like when I miss my flight or things like that over like a piece of paper or just like, you know, trying to find the right bus or, you know, navigating the metro in Mexico City, which is like intense because the metro in Mexico City is like packed like sardines, like kind of like Paris. Um, But like expect that like all the time, basically, unless you're like going on off hours, it's like sardine packed in, you know, but I don't know. I feel like in Paris, they give you a little bit more space, like standing room, but like literally in Mexico City, it's like sardines. Like I can feel your breath on me. Um, (laughs) But with all of that being said, you know, I think having the opportunity to be in a different environment and try different things is like, it's empowering because we realize that we can do the thing. And I think as you were sharing earlier, doesn't have to be halfway across the world it can be an hour and I'll even like share recently I've been going to Michoacan it's in Zitacuro, Mexico um and like the first time we like we were there like in the city basically I hopped out of the car to like go find an ATM and this is like mind you a city I've never been in before there's people kind of buzzing all around me but you know I I knew even though I was kind of like well this is new it was it was that feeling of like oh this is new like uh but I was like, no, like I've, I've done this before. If I could do this in Mexico City, like I can do this in the, in a town that's like way smaller. But I think it's those reminders of like, oh, this is a little uncomfortable because I'm out of my comfort zone again. But it's like, remember you've done this before. Like, can you remember that you've done this before and use that to really like give you the fuel of like, okay, I need to go to the ATM and then I need to like, you know, find my direction, la la la. But, you know, as as you said, having internet and apps on your phone now, like, really make it so much easier. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And like you say, all all you have to do is do it once, and then you have proof that you have done it, and that you can do the hard things, and that you can look after yourself. I think that's a a big thing. Like, we rely on other people so much, you know, friends, family, partners, whatever, work, colleagues, whoever, that when you, you kind of forget that you can look after yourself, like, if you need to. And if you can do that, you know, in a different country, like, you don't speak the language, like I said, then all the little things that used to freak you out or used to make you anxious, they don't seem as huge anymore. You know, you know, you've done something huge in a different country and something that really scared you that took you outside your comfort zone and that can be applied to anything like work career if you're starting a business if you're starting a podcast you know you know you don't want to put yourself out there but you know you you've done things that you know has scared you and that have made you feel uncomfortable and you know that you did them and you were okay and it was actually a great experience so you can apply that to lots of other things in your life and so it's not just empowering in the moment and like you say, when you go traveling again somewhere else, it's it's empowering in general. And, you know, you can apply that to every aspect of your life, I think. Yeah, definitely. And as you were like speaking, it was making me think about how when people ask me like, well, how does someone build self-trust, right? Because people go around like, well, you need to have trust in yourself. Like everyone just like throws this around, right? And I've been on podcasts where people ask me, well, like, how do you do that? And I'm like, okay, how do I explain this in a way that's like not, <laughs> well, like you just like, you know, trust yourself as I always say it's understanding well like why haven't you been trusting yourself right like why are you not trusting yourself I think that's a really big thing but then the second part of this is like in order to begin building trust in yourself you got to do those little things right maybe it's taking a different route that you're not familiar with maybe it is like going away for a weekend right like to a different place on your own you can do it successfully you navigate it successfully like you're giving yourself evidence that you can do like you can trust yourself right and that's what over time, like I, I always refer to as like the compound effect is what leads to the self-trust. Like, you know, 
I always say like building self-trust doesn't have to come from someone being like bold like me being like okay great I'm like move to Mexico for myself you know like it doesn't have to be that it can be something that works um that works for you right and like where you're at right now because sometimes yeah I feel like the, the comparison might just still like traveling and solo travel sometimes gets into people's hands and they think that it has to be this like grander like voyage right but it it really doesn't no definitely and like you said with the trusting yourself um I find it it comes for me it comes from like making promises to myself and keeping them it's so easy to keep promises to other people that you feel bad if you don't do it but if you've been telling yourself for years that you're going to do solo traveling or you're going to move to the other country or you're going to put yourself out there and you don't do it then you know you're not going to feel like you can trust yourself to do it but if you say you're going to do something big and you know big can be relative it can be you know climbing like Kilimanjaro like I said or it can be driving halfway down the road and meeting new people and trying something new um and you do it and you you keep doing this and you you show yourself that you can keep your promises to yourself I think that's what builds that for me personally definitely so for me I think building sort of self-trust and confidence in myself is keeping promises to myself because it's so easy to keep promises to other people like um you don't want to let them down but for some reason it's really hard to keep promises to ourselves if we want to make a big life change like move country or you know go after that new career or start that business or go solo traveling but if you make the promise to yourself and do it and you keep doing that you show yourself that you you know you keep your promises to yourself and that builds self-trust that builds self-confidence and you know, again, that can apply to any area of your life, but that's what I've, I found. And it took me years and years and years to get to this point. I've wanted to be a digital nomad since 2014 when I first started working for myself and I could work remotely anywhere. And it took me until the start of last year to do it. So it took me a while. But now if I say like, I want to solo travel, I want to go to that country, I want to go to that country, I don't put it off, I just do it. And then I've, I've sort of shown myself and proved to myself. And like you say, you're giving yourself evidence that you can do these things and you can trust yourself and you can trust your judgment and all that kind of stuff yeah yeah I feel like that part of your story is really relatable in terms of you said you've been wanting to do this since 2014 right yeah and it <laughs> yep. took how many years did it take you to do it uh so about ooh, no seven seven or eight years <laughs> mm-hmm. what do you I was gonna ask this because I feel like this is so relatable like for me like when I say I'm going to do something, I just do it. I kind of just have that personality. I don't really put it off because I'm kind of like, well, like if it happens, it happens. Awesome. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. And then I'll just go on to the next thing. But for you waiting that long, like what do you feel was holding you back? I think it was, I mean, fear, everything comes down to fear. I think, um, especially for me, it's just a, what a case I was, was I fearing and I think a lot of it honestly is like what other people expect of you like you know in my I come from a little village you know a little town in the middle of nowhere England and it's just it's a weird thing to do to work for yourself to like put all your stuff in storage leave your house like I did and go traveling it's just it's a bizarre thing to do especially when you're in th- your 30s like <laughs> this is something you know like a gap year student should do or something so there's always that kind of fear of like people you know they'll just be like what the hell are you doing um but then obviously the fear of solo travel like was holding me back um like I say I used to be very shy quiet anxious I would not used to you know I wouldn't like to go to a party on my own I wouldn't like to arrive on my own not knowing if my friends were there or not I'd be really awkward if I had to go to an appointment somewhere new I would you know, worry that there were like, where would, where do I park? What if there's not a car parking space? What if I'm late? What if I don't know where to go? You know, all that kind of stuff. And knowing I was like that, the thought of going and staying in this like co-living house, I'd been on their mailing list for years and I'd been wanting to do it, but I've been holding myself back because I thought just the idea of going there and living with 15 strangers from all over the world for like a month or however long, it just terrified me. Honestly, I'm just, you know, it's just an introvert, uh, person with social anxiety quiet shy person's absolute nightmare (laughs) but I knew I wanted to do it and I knew it would be a good thing for me and I knew I would have a great time if I could just push through that bit um and like I said the pandemic was a, a big thing about that I I you know we couldn't travel I was stuck at home I've been living on my own for like three years by that point working on my own self employed no team 
it was very lonely. And that was before even the pandemic happened and all the lockdowns happened. So I was just craving community and connection, which is what this um, co-living, they're called Sun & Co, is all about. It's all about, you know, having a, that community. It's a global community, but it really doesn't feel like a huge community. Like everyone knows everyone. If you just go to their like place a couple of times, you'll cross paths with so many amazing people and then you'll continue crossing paths with them. So it is a real community feel. And yeah, connection is all about self-development, mindset, personal growth, as well as like learning things for your business. And yeah, I was just craving that. And I just got to the point where I was just like fed up of my fears and limiting beliefs about my public speaking and putting myself out there, holding me back. I was just like, you know, I'm, I, I was 35, I think when I made it the decision or 36. And I was like, I've, I've got to this point in life and I know the thing that's holding me back. So I should just get over it. Like, otherwise I'm never going to do it and I'm never going to get to where I want to be in any area of my life. So it was just a case of getting fed up of my own stuff really and um wanting to do it and um yeah just I, I read a couple of books and they just put in my head that I should do something different try something new and just go for it and that's what I decided to finally do <laughs> yeah a hundred percent so thank you for like taking the time to explain that because I feel like that's really relevant to for a lot of mm. people for me I'm kind of like an alien and I've always done things differently <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> to give you an example, when I finished high school, within a year, I moved to San Francisco by myself and no one really mm. like around me, you know, like they weren't doing that. They were going off to like university um, and starting their four years. But I had left high school early and did my first two years of college when I was in high school. So I've always kind of been just like treading my own path. So when people ask me like, well, how do you just like do these things? And I'm like, I, I honestly like have to kind of tell you I have a predisposition for it like it's just kind of how I roll mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but I do know that there are a lot of people that have that fear of well like this is not really my main you know this is not how I kind of operate like this is really scary and they, they keep pushing pause but I think what you said is kind of like you're in the driver's seat of your life like you get to decide of like hey I'm fed up with me being afraid like the only way I'm not going to be afraid is by doing the thing and you know Fear honestly holds us back so much from so many different things. But um, I study the Gene Keys, the, yeah, the Gene Keys by Richard. It's like this whole like personal development process system. It's like, yeah. Anyway, I don't want to get too much into it. But there's this quote that really stuck out to me that says like the fears that you have are pointing you like towards exactly the thing that you need to do. Because that is basically mm -hmm. like where you're going to grow the most, the things that scare us, right? I'm not talking about like physical things that scare us. I'm talking more about like, you know, psychological um, yeah. things, you know, you know, the things that we know if we do them, like there's not really any reason to be afraid of them. It's just more the idea, right? So yeah, that's been something that I've kind of been thinking about a lot because like there have been a lot of times where I'm like, yeah, no, I'm afraid, but well, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> But that's just, that's just my tendency, right? Um, mm -hmm. But as I said, I'm kind of like an alien. I don't feel like <laughs> I don't feel like everyone oh. is like me when it comes to fear. <laughs> oh no I wish I was like that honestly I really do like I love that uh, but like you say yeah um my one of my friends Beth always says if something scares me I know that's the th exact thing I need to do and yeah if you think of that like if you think of fears that way as in they're actually pointing you towards the path you're meant to be on or you know a path that will help you well overcome whatever fears or limited beliefs you have and that will take you to the next level like they're not things to be avoided they're things to be aware of, things for you to like pinpoint if you're not, you might not even be aware of some of them that are holding you back. So really think about it, like journal on it, uh, meditate on it, ask chat GPT, whatever, <laughs> whatever you do and the fight, <laughs> figure out what your fears are and then just, just head towards them. I know it's scary, but it's only scary for a while. It's only scary until you do it. After that, you feel amazing and you can do it again and again and you can go on to bigger and better things, whether that's travel, whether that's work, whatever. And yeah, if you think of them as sort of signposts leading you the way, then that seems a lot less scary to me. <laughs> and it yes. gives you an actual path path to go down. Yeah, exactly. And this is why I always say like, yeah, like the things that we're afraid of that obviously not physical things. I mean, physical fear, like around physical things that could happen. Like, yeah, that's very natural, very normal. And there actually are some things that like we need to be afraid of, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, 
But when it comes more to this like psychological, emotional around like, oh, I'm afraid to travel to this country by myself, or I'm afraid to like go on a solo trip by myself, or maybe honestly, like it could even be I'm afraid to move within my own, like, you know, within my own state or country within it to another place on my own and start anew. Like those tend to be, as you just said, like those signposts of like, well, what if like, instead of like seeing it as a blocker, we kind of saw it as like a way of like, oh, like, look, we're getting all of these kind of signs and directions of this is how we're going to grow the most. <laughs> mm, yeah. Uh, yeah. I love that way of looking at it. It's uh, it, it definitely makes it seem a lot, a lot more uh, achievable <laughs> to overcome yes. your fears. Yes, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I think achievable and a lot more like empowering because I feel like, you know, mm. I don't know. Fears are always are, are such um when it comes to the more psychological, emotional side of things, like they're so interesting, but it's like, I have a mentor who literally told me, and it was like a big lesson <laughs> when we first started working together. Fear is the gas pedal, not the brake. So it's like, when you feel Ooh. the fear, like boom, go into it because that's the only way you're going to get to the other side. Fear doesn't mean to stop. So I, I feel like I've had this conversation in so many different ways, but that always tends to always like come up of it's like, yeah, well, we, we feel the fear and we continue to go. But I think it's kind of, as you were saying, well, as we're continuing to go and follow that fear, we have those practices, whether it's journaling or meditation or having support from like a therapist or a coach, whatever it is, so that we're not like ignoring the fear, but we're just understanding it and really kind of seeing where it comes from, right? Because everything has a root, like every belief, everything we feel and think has some type of root. And so I think it's just having that awareness, which is the empowering thing, right? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I love that the gas pedal, not the brake thing. I've not heard that before. And I'm going to think of that every time I'm terrified to do something. I really like that idea. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, my mentor, Nick Patino, if you want to follow him on Instagram, he talks about it sometimes. Mm. <laughs> so, Great. <yeah. laughs> Thank you. Um, I've talked about my mentor a lot on the podcast in terms of like mentioning things that like we worked together on and like talked about, but I don't think I've ever mentioned his name. So yeah, there we go. Mm. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> who my mentor is. So. <laughs> um, cool. Well, thank you so much for the conversation today. I'm definitely feeling like a lot of insight and a lot of insight on just like, it's not just feeling empowered. Like it's like in traveling, it just translates into so many different areas of your life. And I think like that was really, really helpful for you to point that out of how, you know, traveling for you, like you weren't just empowered in the sense of like I can solo travel, but it's really like affected like every aspect of of who you are now. And I think that that's something that's like a really big deal and something to celebrate. So thank you. If anyone is interested in getting in touch with you, um, working with you, why don't you let us know the best way how? Yeah, so thank you for having me on, by the way. This is a really, really fun conversation. I always love talking about this stuff. So thank you. And, and yeah, you can head to my website, which is traveltransformationcoach.com. I'm on Instagram at Travel Transformation Coach as well. And yeah, you, you can listen to the Travel Transformation podcast as well on all major platforms. And yeah, just send me a DM or send me an email on my website if you're interested in anything I'm talking about. And yeah, thank you again. Yeah, thanks so much for coming on Roaming the Now. Um, this was a really fun conversation. <laughs> thank you. Um, I, I love these types of conversations as well. So again, thank you. And until next time, this is your host, Marisol of Roaming the Now, signing off, hoping that you are enjoying Roaming the Now wherever you are in the world. Thanks for catching this episode of Roaming the Now. If you have not already, make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, Wherever you are in the world, I hope you are enjoying Roaming the Now.